I'll tell you what. Did you know that Brooklyn, Illinois is home of the first free black town in the United States? Did y'all know that? Well, now you do, motherfucker. You went down there in Brooklyn. You, ever, you, ever, you ain't never been to the Pink Slip? No. I have not. A little club out there? Sounds like no. you, you sound too young to be going to the Pink Slip anyway. What about, what, about, what, what about the Dog Pound? No. They got to keep me out of there. What about, you got you got Club Peekaboo? <laughs> club Peekaboo? Yeah. Take a peek at you, why don't you see that? <laughs> and then you got Bottoms Up. Bottoms Up, huh? Yeah, I'll take your bottoms off. You want to be careful. And these are all in Brooklyn? Yep. Roxy's Night Club. Larry Flint's Hustler. So James Earl Ray is actually from two towns over from Brooklyn, Illinois. Yeah, Southern yeah. Illinois got some of the shittiest white people. You, you know who James Earl Ray is? I know exactly who that is. Who is it? Hey. Oh, what's going shit. What's the word? Got to do some filming now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just here chilling. Got started early. Yeah. Lord. Oh, Here Wayne, go. good to see you. Did you offer my man a beverage? I didn't, I didn't. It was very rude of me. Very, very rude of me. There you go. My man. Wanna grab one for yourself? So, Wayne, real quick, you actually went viral and had, there was like, I remember there was like 10 million shares or something on, on a post. Posted it on Twitter explaining that a classmate named Wayne Hayer had come to class with his five month old daughter after he and his wife were unable to find childcare. Wayne, how'd you feel walking on campus with your baby girl? I had brought her on campus before, but I had never brought her to class with me. I was a bit nervous about it. And I remember Dr. Alexander pulling me to the side because he caught me texting the class one time saying, hey, I think you should be paying, paying attention instead of looking to your phone. And I was like, you know, I have a wife and kid that I need to check up on. And, uh, and uh, he was like, you know what? If need be, you can always bring your kid to class. So one day, my wife had to take public transportation, and I didn't want her to, to hop on the public transit by herself with a baby. So I was like, you know what? I'll take her with me to class. I couldn't afford to miss it because we had midterms coming up. And once I got to like, the classroom, I was ready to turn around, but I was kind of at like the point of like no return. <laughs> so I had to do what I had to do. You were on a talk show mm -hmm. where Shaquille O'Neal was. Yeah making some type of donation and uh, yeah. funny enough full circle i believe he said here's five thousand dollars wayne don't spend my money at the strip club i believe yeah. that's what shaq said right yeah 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 he got my number actually he got my number from i don't know who from, from who but he called me personally and he said come down to my restaurant i have something for you and so he owned a restaurant in the atlanta brain stadium which i think it was and so I went down there. I went down there. It was me, my wife at the time, my daughter. There's a picture of a shack holding my daughter. And me, I just looked like a straight ant compared to him. <laughs> but, but yeah, he invited me on the show. I got to smoke weed with Killer Mike. I was chilling with Shaq's older brother. He's a bodybuilder, super yoke, but he's like 5'4". The brother? Yeah, the older brother. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This was on the Steve Harvey show? Is that what this was on? No, 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 no. This was on Shaquille O'Neal's podcast. So, oh, okay. so this was his 200th episode. So if you look up the Shaq podcast and you look up the 200th episode, Killer Mike's on there, and that's the episode that I was on. Wayne Hayer's on. Yeah, there. yeah. He gave me five thousand dollars. He what? was like, he was like, hey man, I see you a young dad doing your thing, trying to get your education, go to school. So here's five thousand dollars for you, man. Don't be spending my money at the strip club. So is this, is this all the facts? All them. What the? F <laughs> here's Couch's facts. He's, what the Couch's fuck? Couch's facts. He's looking up. Yeah. What the oh, fuck? What you got going on here, Couch? What the fuck is... <laughs> we'll go ahead here, you know. See? <laughs> got my search engine. I gotta call my woman, man. <laughs> oh, anyway. Oh so what's up, Wayne? How you been, buddy? You got, how's your girlfriend white, but you watch black porn? It's a good question. I don't know what you're talking about, Wayne. When you fuck your girl, and yep. you ass naked, do you wear socks and shoes? No, I'm butt ass naked. Really? No socks, no shoes, no nothing? No, it's weird. Never socks? No. You seem like a socks guy. Yeah, man, that's what I'm black feet might get cold. Is that a black thing? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What do you mean? You don't watch black porn? I was always got like a fitted hat on, you know what I'm saying? And some socks and some tins. I can get behind the hat, like you know? wearing the hat. That's stereotypical, man. That's stereotypical. What? You were literally watching black porn. What are you talking about? Well, when you can't be something, you want to just, you know, you want to see it. <laughs> just dreaming, right? Yeah, it's, it's more just, it's more for, it's, it's an internal wow. thing, honestly. So, be, being, being, Martin Luther King Day, did you did you invite Wayne onto the show because it's Martin Luther King Day and he's black? Not at all. No, that's just a coincidence. Yeah. And I walk in and you're talking about the, you know, James Earl Ray, Martin Luther King. Are you that, sure? That, yeah, that was just that was purely by coincidence. It was purely by coincidence. Is is total 
random chance. Yeah, he's dropping all the gems of Southern Illinois on me, you know. Yeah. He's got a lot here. There's a lot of crazy stuff here, man. All the old gangster stuff here is why the last man hanged. The gangster, Charlie Burr. The tall fella. So just a couple towns over. No, oh. Robert Wildo, he's from Old. Same as James Earl Ray. Oh, they're from the same place. Yeah. So. <laughs> that place is just packed with people. Uh, Wayne, uh, you're, you're from Chicago. Yeah. yeah. I was born in Patterson. Patterson, New Jersey. Patterson, New Jersey, somewhere mm -hmm. on the south side, right? Devontae Johnson's from Patterson. Yeah. Right? He's Man, Jersey is different from Chicago, though. Chicago's a lot bigger. Jersey's a lot smaller. Well, Patterson, New Jersey was a lot smaller, so, like, crime was different. You know what I mean. Got he, 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 did, is Wayne a strong coffee drinker? How does he like his coffee? Do you remember? To, to, they take the, the sugar thing at the coffee or at the, the gas station and they turn it like this and hold a, a solid steady static hold for about six seconds <laughs> that long uh just just sugar probably i don't know 40 50 grams of sugar and one cup of coffee hey, man. How, how much how much of the cup do you think was sugar when you would at least a quarter of it i know like when i order my coffee like in general i get 12 sugars two creams can, can we do you eat like this all the time I mean, you drink this well i drink it was a honey bun and a cup of coffee every morning yeah, well, you know, now my, now my eating's clean because, you know, I'm in my 30s now, you know what I mean? So oh, yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah, you, you know what I mean? You're about 29. Hey, right? we'll, we'll run to the gas station, and we'll film you making a cup of coffee, and it'll be fucking ridiculous. If you got time today or t tomorrow. I don't give a shit. Okay. Yeah. So, so you, you pretty much, you, you can, can we see what you look like physically now? Now? Shit. I got a lot of layers. I'm not doing on. this. I'm not doing this next to him. No way. <laughs> Fuck no. You got four, you got three sweatshirts. Yeah, I know, man. It's cold, man. It's like fucking negative five out there. Shit. I'm a little hairy, but I'm yeah, still I'm solid. Not doing that. All right. We've you know seen, what I mean? We've seen enough. Yeah, settle down, cowboy. You know, you know, st still solid. So, ca so Couch, you, you go in after the coffee, and then uh -huh. you, we, we want to hear about Couch's work. That's what we want to hear about. Couch only works hard in jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think right. he was meant for a work life. He wasn't meant to go to school. And uh, I mean, listen, man, he, he a stupid motherfucker, but he's okay with me. You know what I mean? Like, this ain't me talk shit about you, man. You know, we all got strengths and weaknesses. You know what I mean? I know I'll never be a Jacob Couch. What? You know what I mean? So, and I'm perfectly okay with that. What but you, this motherfucker. If you were interviewing Couch, what do you think his strengths would be? It's like grappling or just like in general? <laughs> Whatever you think. You say what comes to mind. What, what are If I was interviewing you <clears throat> for a job and I said, what do you believe Jacob Couch's strengths are? You know what? Destitute. Don't, Don't you question. know how, like... Answer the fucking question. Jacob's strength is Answer letting you know question. that he's not smart. Now, hold on. This is what I mean by this. I ain't calling you a dummy. You know what? I should never even said that. No, you should He lets it be known. He lets it be known that he's not a know-it-all. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if he's lost on some shit, if he don't know it, He'll, he'll say he don't know it, or he'll be like, you know, like a typical hillbilly, you know what I mean? And so, you know how to work with him. You got other people who be faking their way through shit, you know what I mean? That ain't cool. Couch don't fake his way through that shit. Not Cap, not if, no, 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 if he's a dumbass, he just lets it be done. What about his weaknesses? His weaknesses? If you were gonna take his position in the company, and you could set him up, what would you use to set him up? What are the weaknesses? What is his weakness? And you'd be thinking about Wayne's. I don't know, man, I got it. <laughs> oh, this is so good. You stumped me on that one. We'll come back to it. What do you think Wayne's strengths are? Oh, he's about to throw me under the bus. Wayne's strengths. Let's hear it. Throw me under the bus. Uh, as a person, as an employee. In general. In general, um, I think uh, I think Wayne has did an incredible job of being a great father to Asada. Now you're making me feel bad, you know what I'm saying? Because I just called you an idiot, let's, let's go ahead. Okay. Let's, let's get to the weaknesses. All right, weaknesses. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. You, you, you remember in school how they had the buildings aside from the building that all the other kids took the classes in? And they, there was about 12 to 15 of those kids that had like a special teacher. LD, BD. What's that? A learning disability and a behavior disorder. Oh, yeah, special ed. Yeah. That's not I'm, special ed necessarily, but. No, I yeah. just think that's kind of where Wayne would be if I were to Dang. pick him up and put him down somewhere. Would he know? be in the BD part or the LD part? BD. BD. Yeah, man, BD, big dick, bachelor's degrees. Yeah. Black daddy. BD for sure. Team BD all the way. 
<laughs> I know, I can't, it, it, it's, you know, it's hard to look at a man like Wayne see any weaknesses. You, you see him take his shirt off and stand up, you, you go, oh my God, I gotta have my woman. Wayne, put your shirt on. Uh, uh, so on the, on the Daisy Fresh, we had tons of comments about, we, we were getting uh, messages on the page, like, uh, I don't have any here, I, I would pull them up, but couches. Watching his little porn hub. Go, he also has BD on his computer. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's there were a lot of comments. So hey, is the the grappling horseman? And then they started saying the black horseman. They started changing, you know. Mm. Is, is is the the black horseman? Is is he single? And uh, yeah, and I always answer, uh, of course, he's single anyway. But uh, they loved him. He was a huge character. You were the star until Wayne came onto the show, and then everyone kind of forgot about you. How did that make you feel? Really sad. Really sad, you know. I was I always wanted to be a movie star growing up, and then I I worked so hard. I, just fucking put years and years and hours on the mat just to claim some for some sort of fame, and I have this fucking concrete cowboy come through. Con have you seen concrete cowboy? Yeah, yeah. Have you seen concrete cowboy? Yeah, yeah. Did you like it? Hell yeah, I loved it. I don't love it. Just, this fucking guy comes through, fucking Denzel Washington over here, coming through on a, on a horse with a, a hat and a fucking saddle on. It just takes all my thunder, man. I, I love him though. I love him. He's a great dude. He's a good friend, you know. Do you think that Wayne had a romantic um, relationship with a woman who owned the horse farm? That, that was kind of the topic. You talking about that old dusty lady? <laughs> that's, yeah. not, that's not what I said. I just said the. Oh, she's the, sweet. The woman who, <laughs> the woman who owned the horse farm. She's yeah. sweet. Wayne, Wayne denies any type of. Uh, oh, he's laying it to her. You think so? He was laying it to her. No, as soon as he, as soon as, 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 shut the fuck up. As soon as you <laughs> picking, as soon as you picking it up, you was laying it down. They were you know nice horses. They were nice horses, but she no, definitely, no. she she definitely hit on me before. But no, I never. You tell me, you tell me, lady, you tell me, lady, with ten acres and ten different horses on those ten acres, with also other animals that she took care of, oh, gave man. it all to you, at any time you wanted, throughout any time period ever, yeah. and 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 you and you didn't even so much as wink at this lady. No, you're a liar. You're a liar. Let me tell you something. You're a liar. She, so she had breast cancer. Okay. And she did something that was a little weird one day. As a way to like, it caught my attention. It just didn't catch my soldier's attention, if you know what I mean. That soldier didn't salute. But I was helping her fill out a job application. And. Uh, you were she, helping her fill out a job yeah. application? Yeah. Do you remember where? Uh, it was uh, where I worked at, at at the time. I was taking her up with a job with me. She seemed like she had a lot of money. She didn't seem like she really needed a job. Well, she had like a 70 acre farm, but she wanted money to like, you know, just, you know, just like extra shit. You know what I mean? She was like one of them old folks that, that can't sit down. Extra shit like you. Maybe she wanted to spoil you a little bit. I mean, that's what you want to say, but. She wanted to work with you. But anyways, <laughs> I'm on her laptop filling out this job application for her and she gets, she comes out of the shower like naked. She had breast cancer though, you know what I mean? So like it's like a huge, you know what I mean? Yeah. So even if I wanted to like get turned on, that kind of like just killed the whole vibe. Nice. I, you know what I'm saying? I can only lay with just about anything, you know what I mean? But what I saw like that huge scar, so, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, that's too much. I'm, I, I, I'm I, just I, saying, man. You, you you gotta you gotta ease it up on me, you know what I mean? Yeah. You ever heard of you ever heard of Dale? Is she just got me? You know what I'm saying? You can't yeah. just pop out like that and just throw that shit on me. So she she just she just came in ready. Yeah, and I just It's I, too much. I, I finished the application. That was what happened. That was the only thing she you finished that day? She got the job. She got the job, but, <laughs> but. <laughs> hey, listen, so so Morehouse, real quick. So yeah, yeah. for for the for the white folks that don't know, and maybe yeah. some of the black folks, mm -hmm. um to tell us about Morehouse. Like uh Morehouse is an HBCU, meaning, meaning historically black college or university. So, um, so, so no, no Alec Baldwin. There, are, there are white kids that go to HBCUs. As a matter of fact, uh, Vice did an episode on one of my classmates. His name is Tiago. I forget his last name. But if you go on YouTube and type in "white kid at HBCU," you'll see uh, his first his video is the first one that pops up. I think it has like ten or fifteen million views. Huh. You know huh. what I mean? So white kids do go to HBCUs. And if they make a video, they get 15 million views because there's that small amount. Of and there was a white by Victorian Morehouse back in 2012, I believe it was. How did Couch do that? At Morehouse? Where is Morehouse? Atlanta, Georgia. 
So recently, Couch and I were doing a seminar. Couch would run through Spellman. Couch, Couch and I were. <laughs> he, he would run through Spellman. So Spellman's so Morehouse, where I went to, is an all boys college. Yeah. So where I went, so Morehouse, it was in this at. It was in what was called the AUC, that uh, that stands for the uh, Atlanta University Center because there's three colleges on one campus. So you got Morehouse, which is all boys, you got Clark Atlanta, which is co-ed, and you got Spelman College, which is all girls. All three of these colleges share the same campus. Oh, excuse me, and Morris Brown. So can, can the Morris guy, Brown, so all four. Can the guys go, can, can you mingle with the ladies there? Oh yeah, that, that, that's what they do all the time. You so know I mean? Couch and I were on the airplane recently, mm -hmm. and we went to do a seminar in Florida, mm -hmm. and a woman from Atlanta told us that Atlanta is historically the gayest black city. Is yeah. that, that is that factual? Man, you know what? DC gives it a run for its money, but but yeah, Atlanta's pretty damn gay. So she said there were like codes there that meant like people looking for like Yeah, gay man. So I don't know I don't know if it's still a code thing now, but like when I was there, I so, was in three different scenarios where a dude pressed me and said, Hey, do you know where the liquor store at? Yeah, so can you say to Couch what like if you were trying to, to hit on him? What would you say? What would the, the, those pickup lines be? I ain't gay, but no, 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 just, <laughs> just hypothetical but for this one. I know if they were trying to test him, right? They would ask you two questions. Either one, or two questions. Do you know where the liquor store at, or are you family? Now, are you family seems a bit more blatant, but you know my dumbass, I didn't know either one. You know what I mean? So I remember one dude asked me, he's like, "Hey man, are you family?" I said, "Yeah, I'm family. I love everybody." So he was like, "Oh, all right, cool." And so we at the table, you know, we drinking and shit, and I. <laughs> I got like a thirty-five dollar budget, man. You know what I mean? I'm in college. You know, I ain't got nothing. It sounds you know like I mean? your stuff's about to be. You know crazy. what I'm saying? But these, you know, drinks are coming from the table. And they tell me like, "Hey, it's already paid for." I'm like, "Okay, cool." But I'm seeing all these dudes come up to the table and shit like that, and I'm not thinking. I'm drinking, you know, and I know I'm like, "It ain't no females at this table." <laughs> you know what I mean? And they thought I said I was gay when I told them I was family. So, they so now. I done ran up they tab, then drank all they drinks, then told them I was family. And you you owe it. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They was looking like, so you gonna pay up? I was like, <laughs> oh. Nah, fam, I don't do that. Yeah, I don't do so that, you, man. You say, yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm in the fam. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm fam. And then he ask you, you know what the liquor store is? Like, yeah. You know. Yeah, but when you say you know what the liquor store is, I think, I think that's the one, I think that's like cold for like, are you down to drink and fuck? Drink. What do you think about that? Now, I don't know if that's a thing now. I'm not related. You know what the liquor store is? <laughs> no fucking clue. Maybe it's, maybe it's like a lick, liquor, like a liquor license. Liquor license. Yeah, like but then. It's but, more but, like but, lick but, him, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, lick him. I'm like, I'm like, it ain't no girl there, you know what I mean? So, like, now, I don't know if they speak like that now, but because like when I went to Atlanta, this, this is 2016. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was it was, it was a while ago, you know, but but that was the lingo they were using when I went there. Have you ever you been to, a, you ever go to any gay bars that are in Atlanta? Yeah, uh, so I worked. Uh, I worked at this bar across. You worked the at a gay bar. No, I worked across the street from the most popular black gay bar in Atlanta. So I worked for this bar, uh, in, in comedy club called the Vortex, which was like, which is the most popular burger spot in Atlanta. But right across the street is a bar called Bulldogs, which is the most popular black gay bar in Atlanta. And Bulldogs. I, yeah, yeah, it's called Bulldogs. You yeah. know what I mean? Now at first I thought it was because the Georgia Bulldogs. Right. You know what I mean? That's what I would think. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But no. What's no. it mean? I don't know what it means, but... What do you think it means? <laughs> but, What's it uh, mean to you? Sound like you're going to bring your boy to get dogged. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know, but... So when, when you won the Noogie Pans, mm -hmm. you won double gold and purple belt, after, it was in Atlanta that year, because mm -hmm. of COVID, you went out, and I thought you had went to Bulldogs. You and Orlando nah, Sanchez. Not Bulldogs, no. We went to, uh, we went to Magic City. So Flow yeah. Grappling actually has so footage bad. of you and Orlando... Leaving the hotel, yeah. Being, being wild, leaving the hotel, <laughs> going to Bulldogs. <laughs> Magic City. Or Magic City, sorry. <laughs> Magic City. You got a Vortex burger first, and then you creeped over to Bulldogs. <laughs> I mean, you stayed in the Vortex parking lot, you know, because you didn't want anyone to see it. But the best strip clubs in Atlanta, man, are really like just like the straight ghetto ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, because, you know, like, it's different. You know what I mean? Like, so, white strip clubs, they don't take off their clothes. They still got bras on. Shit. They, don't talk, they ain't got no ass in you. So, you know what I mean? So like, so it's just like, it, you just looking at a girl on the, on the table like, Ugh, you know what I'm saying? Now you go to the other uh, one. Oh man. What them be like? But look, right, so bro, first of all, man, you, you, you can get about 12, 15 wings. 
you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, some mild sauce with some ranch and a fat ass in your face. You know what I mean? And you can touch them. So you know what I mean? So if you smoke weed, oh, 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 it's lit. If you lit. had to show, it's lit. Like, so you're saying that the white girls wear the bras at the club or whatever, mm. you know? What, 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 what do you, can you show your best impression of a, you ever been to a black strip club? Mm -hmm. You ever been to a white strip club? Mm -hmm. Can you show the difference? Not on camera, no. Why not? Because I have to take all my clothes off. You don't have to take your clothes off. We'll just pretend. He just said they got the bra on anyway. The the difference, white strip club, black strip club. What did you learn when, when Orlando Sanchez took you out down there? Was, he's saying, he said, you know, Atlanta's known. Atlanta and Tampa are supposed to have the best strip clubs, mm -hmm. right, in the United yeah. States. So did you learn a little something? Yeah, there's a big difference, man. There's a huge, huge difference between the way they uh, operate their business. Between white strip club and yeah, black but, strip but club? Well, well, the women, just the, I mean, you know, the, the club is the club, but mm. the, a white woman and a black woman in a strip club, or, they operate two different ways, you oh, see. Okay. So how do yeah. a white woman act? Well, the white women, see, they like, they, <laughs> all right, all right. they like, they just, they get up, they don't move too much. Okay. You know, because they got a job after they get off done stripping, see. So they don't move oh, too much. They, they, get, they, okay, they, okay, they get up okay. right on that month, like they said. <laughs> and then see, that's the white woman, see. So how do they do at the Black Strip Club? So the black, you know, sisters, they get down, they get that leg up. Oh, not leg up. What? Leg up. DJ. Oh shit. <laughs> what? They start, what? Bouncing. They start bouncing. Okay, so, bounce. Okay. Big booty bitches. Big booty bitches. Big booty bitches. Well, go, Keisha. And then sometimes, look, sometimes they get the thing. This must have been in Tampa. I don't know about any of that. <laughs> that was in Atlanta. That was in Atlanta. That was down by the. It wasn't nowhere near the liquor store, though. <laughs> the liquor store thing is crazy. I still don't quite understand that, but. They might have a different code switch for it. All right, so let's. uh, let, let's. You got the who's number one coming up. Let me pop these up here real quick. Okay, we'll talk about that for just a second. Who's number 122? Uh, your match. It's been announced, right? Mm hmm. With Sebastian Rodriguez, we talked about Devonte Johnson from Patterson, New Jersey earlier. Mm -hmm. They're actually from one of my favorite coaches ever in the world, uh, Marilo Santana. Oh, he's the best. Uh, how do I get rid of this thing? There it is. Uh, so yeah, Marilo Santana is the best. No one is going to come out there. What, what do you think about the Sebastian match? I mean, Sebastian is a, a black belt world champion, no geek. Obviously, he's one of the best IBGGF competitors. Uh, what, are you, what are your kind of thoughts on all that? Uh, I think. I've been looking forward to going against him for a while now just because like he, he wins so much he's like always like even if he's not winning he's on top of the he's on the podium and he's always like uh, coming for the number one spot at, you know at 185 and he's always having matches with the best guys in the top 10 and he's just he's been a, been around a long time and always been super tough and you know being a student I realize you know anybody that's going to be a black belt under Muriel Santana is going to be one tough son of a bitch so I'm looking forward to it. Yes, that's, he's a killer. Uh, what do you think about that, Sebastian Couch there? Uh, Tell the truth. I don't know much about Sebastian. Just pretend Couch ain't here. Uh, I mean, I would like to see Couch wrestle more. You know what I mean? I think he has very underrated wrestling. I, uh, I've been telling Couch this for, for as long as I've been on PSF that whenever he pulls guard, it just... It makes my mind boggle because he's taking me down hard, and I'm and I think I'm a pretty athletic guy. So you know, it's it's not a secret. Obviously, he's got some killer uh, with Pixley. You know what I mean? Pixley, Alejandro, yeah. the wrestling coaches here. Yeah, we like, got dogs here. No, I mean literally, like mm -hmm. you know, Pixley and uh, they're encyclopedias of wrestling. When mm -hmm. I met Michael, he knew stuff. Still to this day, show stuff that just blows my mind. You know that small stuff like mm -hmm. oh, you know, you move your hand an inch, or you mm -hmm. just do this, and yeah. it just blows your mind. So, mm -hmm. uh, in his match with uh, Elder. And Jay Rod, he came out and wrestled. I think that's the first time at the, these recent trials. Mm -hmm. uh, how'd you do in those? I did all right, man. I think won, I won yeah. them, actually. I'm just kidding. So he won the trials. He's already qualified for the ADCC. But mm -hmm. in both of those matches, he kind of wrestled. I think people were a little surprised, which surprises me, I guess, mm -hmm. because he's on the team with so many wrestlers. But uh, anyway, so yeah, he's yeah. going to wrestle. Yeah, Couch can wrestle. What do you, you think, think about I, that? I, the fact I mean, that he doesn't I, show it, it is... Well, that's the thing about a good magician, so you know real secrets, so... I mean, maybe maybe this time around I'll showcase a, a new set of skill. <laughs> right on, all right. So, this match, what do you think about that? 
Ga- Mika Gaba versus Kenta Iwamoto. I think Kenta will surprise a lot of people, but I mean, he beat JT Torres at the last ADCC. So anybody that can beat a two time ADCC champion is obviously a very uh, tough and respectable opponent. And Mika's been on a tear, obviously, lately as well. He just got submission of the year against PJ with that flying arm bar. So. I mean, Mika, everybody knows Mika. He's not, not a secret. He's pretty good at everything. Yeah, he's, he's a great grappler. Off-season he's wrestles incredible. constantly in a lot of Brazilian wrestling tournaments. He dates. You and him are at the OTC together because yeah. he dates a girl that's in the Olympic Training Center wrestling as well as you. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Here's some details yeah. about that. His, his, uh, his girlfriend, Ami Alora, is uh, 19 years old and is a two-time senior uh, world champion in freestyle wrestling. So that's like, I mean, that's pretty fucking monumental. So, totally so tell everybody home, like, my, the difference senior and jujitsu means old as fuck. Well. Senior or senior in wrestling is like, um, is yeah, it's it's basically like a, the adult version or maybe like the ADCC divisions. Basically, it's a step right under the Olympics uh, for international wrestling. So uh, Gavao or Almut? I'm going Gavao. Almut. I think that's. I think this match is going to be the barn burner. It's going to be the match of the night. But I think Galvao takes it. Yeah. Galvao is just. I think Galvao too. Galvao is just too much of a unit right now. Okay, then the next one up will be uh, Tan and Delpers, kind of up and coming thing. Uh, Oliver Taza, obviously Oliver's been around the block before training with Danaher. Mm-hmm. Dapper coming from AOJ. What's your thoughts on that? Everyone kind of knows you spent some time at AOJ here quickly, and uh, you know I think people are kind of wondering what if Tannen's got what it takes in no gi. Yeah, I think, you know, I've trained with both. Um, I think Tynan's an underdog, but I'm going to go with Tynan against this one just because this, this is a second Nogi match, but I do think he can, he has the ability to pull it off against Tynan. You, you think Tynan is the underdog? Yeah, yeah uh, Taz is an ADCC veteran, trials champion, so I think coming in, Dalpro is definitely oh, that's maybe a little bit under How does Tynan win? Uh, po- uh, I think he just dominates him more positionally. So there's no points or anything on the who's number one, but I think maybe Tynan is uh, a little bit more physical than Tazen is able to kind of dominate the pace and position of the match throughout it. So I think he comes out with a decision right on top. What do you think, Wayne? I can see Dalpro dominating most of the match, and uh, I can see Tazen pulling off a Hail Mary Hill. You know, leg lock. If he so wins, it's like kind of going to be how it's from, right? It's going to be from the... Uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, uh, it's going to be a lower body submission. For it'll definitely be a leg lock of Tazen. A leg entanglement, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna, I, I like Oliver and I think he's amazing. I'm going to go out and say that I think Dopper's going to get on his back and finish with a, with a choke. I just think he's a little bit too big and a little bit too strong. So, uh, there. So, Dante Leon from the home team here versus Pato. Pato is obviously the... The, the best 155 pounder uh, after Dante. I think Dante is light years above of everybody. Uh, if, you know, Pato's kind of the new guy coming out, obviously has strong straight ankle locks. Dante's uh, leg uh, entanglement defense is probably second to none. Uh, the way just as well as offense. His well, offense he, is just as good. He's able to sit on the hip. If he's had two matches with Matias, uh, the Polish, uh, probably the best straight ankle lock in the business. That's he, fair. Didn't get ankle locked either time. So for me on this one, I got to pick Dante. I think he's. Uh, like I said, light years ahead of everybody. Too big, too strong, too good. I think he's just a little bit too much for everybody. Pato's the man, incredible. Uh, but I think uh, Dante just runs away with this because of his physical, uh, you know, everything in that one. Thoughts? Yeah, I, I think everywhere, every position you could think of jujitsu is that Dante is stronger than anyone in the world at 155. And I don't think he's... Uh, like you, like you said, I mean, I think he's way far ahead of everyone, not just jiu-jitsu wise, but obviously him being the uh, powerhouse or the juggernaut he is too. I think like, he, he, I think he's gonna, I think he's got it. What do you think, Wayne? I think, I think Dante Leon is the best grappler in the world whose name is not Gordon Ryan. You know what I mean? So like, uh, uh, I don't see anywhere where he loses this match. I mean, he literally just won Nogi Pants beating Devonte Johnson. He's a super heavy. heavy he is a yeah. super, and Devonte Johnson is a true super. Heavy. Yeah, he's, he's a huge. unit. You know what I mean? Like that is that's a monster of an athlete. You know what I mean? I, I, I've I've rolled with the man. You know what I mean? So uh, you know, I believe we're watching uh, uh, Dante Leon like into his prime right now, and I I think he takes this fairly easily. So, uh, Aliquin versus 
Davies, uh, Fion Davies and uh, Tubby Alec, uh, what, what do you guys just thought on that match? Uh, both obviously, uh, you know, game, one big stuff. Uh, Tubby's had lots of huge, huge matches. Fion's probably currently pound for pound, the most dominant female uh, uh, athlete. So what are, your, what are your thoughts on this one? Well, Fion's, uh, I think maybe, is a two-time Black Belt World Champion or one or two-time black belt world champion in the gi, but I know for sure she's an ADCC champ. So, I mean, it's going to be hard to go against that, go against the grain on that. Uh, Tubby has always came in on the who's number ones and had really tough matches. I think she's a really game competitor, but I think at the end of the day, Fion takes it. Blacks on blonde. I mean, um, I'm going for the blonde, sorry. <laughs> So I mean, it's, yeah, I you gotta say her name. I really, I really like. Oh, I don't know her name. Fionn, I'm just going. I'm just, Davis. I'm just going for the. Blonde. He just picks by looks, man. Yeah, yeah, I just pick by looks. Right. Right. I'm sorry, I don't know their names. They're probably gonna hate me for that. Respect. But, uh, no, so I, I think, uh, yeah, the Tubby's an incredible, uh, uh, you know, like a grappler, competitor. Matt awareness is awesome. She always goes for the submission, but I just think the Fionn's a little bit too good, too big right now. Like you said, I really like Tubby, but if I was gambling, I'd have to go with. Fion on that one. Then the main event, I don't, we might have left one out, I can't find all the stuff, is Nick Rodriguez versus Victor Hugo. Killer match, obviously, uh, for many different reasons. What's your thoughts, Wayne, on that one? You, on the men, do you pick on who you know or do you pick by looks? Uh, oh, he, man. He's blonde, too. Man, you know, you know what, man? He's blonde, too. He uh, might be a little big for you, though. You know, you know, I usually pick blondes, man, but, 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 uh, Blondes. but, you know, either of these dudes, but, but Nicky Rod got a six pack, man, you know what I mean? And so, you know, I, I usually okay. go for the most muscled man. And I think he might got some, some, uh, BBC genetics somewhere down there along the line. So, uh, I'm gonna go with, uh, my brother. It sounds like you might be wanting to invite Nick to the liquor store there. He's in the family. You and him man, are man, man, in the family, huh? man, listen, you know what? No comment. <laughs> so, yeah, but, uh, I see. I don't. I don't see a finish. Uh, I think he's gonna do typical Nicky Rod. He's gonna body lock, pass him, mount him, and smother him, and just make his make yeah. the match live in hell. And so I think Victor Hugo is. If anyone in that division is gonna be tough to body lock, I think it's gonna be. Uh, or if, if anyone's gonna be tough to body lock, it's gonna be Victor Hugo. He probably has the best guard, long legged closed guard game in that division. I think uh, Victor's a huge man. He's got the size to compete with Nicky, but can. Victor stopped the tenaciousness of uh, Nikki. Obviously, Nikki's training at the B team. He's got really great training partners. I don't know that Victor's going to be going for any type of leg locks, uh, mm -hmm. which in, in the in the very like past has, has kind of been one of Nick's uh, Achilles heels. So, uh, what, what what what's your thoughts on the the Nikki Rod Hugo match here? Uh, I think I think it'll be a little bit closer than most people are anticipating, just because of the size of Victor Hugo alone, and uh, he. I actually trained with him at AOJ, and man, he's like, he's got some of the, he's got a great feel, amazing jiu-jitsu. Um, Victor, you mean? Victor, yeah. You, you trained with him at AOJ? Yeah, yeah, I trained with Victor at AOJ, and so I think he'll be able to kind of contest some of Nicky Raj's like body locks and, you know, the different kind of passing he does, but I think, um, I just think Nicky Rod is so much to handle and is, is, is such a, such a great grappler that it'll, it'll be a close one. Yeah, he uses his strengths really well, you know, like, you know, like he wasn't like the best wrestler in college, but he's perfect at like what he does though. You yeah, know I mean, what I mean? I think GSP, can, I know it's a completely different sport, but I think GSP kind of fixed that. Uh, like he never wrestled in his life and then he fought Josh Kesh, Koshek two, three time and seeing champ, mm -hmm. took him down at will. And then you kind of see later on, like when, when, when they're just wrestling, I, I, I just, I don't know to agree with what you're saying. I just don't think how you did in college matters. You're also a kid, mm -hmm. you know, you're in your really early twenties and yeah. you're, I just think after that, I learned more about wrestling, uh, a thousand times than what I did wrestling, uh, you know, in high school, you know, yeah. afterwards, you just become your brain mm -hmm. gets on that. But anyway, all right. Yeah. I think that just about covers it. If you got anything else you want to we'll wrap it up to people are coming in the gym, being all crazy and loud now. And, uh, you know, they're ready for class, get you ready for Sebastian, get my man, uh, Wayne ready to take a visit back down to Atlanta. You know, I know he's yeah. going to encounter down there. Wakanda forever. Right. Is the camera still running? It is. No. Gabby Garcia. No, hey, chill out. I'm engaged now. Gabby Garcia, hey, baby. Stop. That was a big deal, right? Like when couch. If you were down on your luck. Hey, stop. And you struggling. Stop it. Oh, okay, sorry. I might have been talking for I'm your guy. Oh, yeah. you. For you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, for me. I ain't talking about him. Fuck you. No, well, head on. I'm trying to help you. I was I was going to help you. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Put that word in. Well, not now. Oh, damn. Gabby, hey, Gabby. Gabby, Gabby holla at you. Right. Gabby, holla at you, boy, girl. I've been loving you before everybody else is loving you, girl. <laughs> she ain't got time for you, too. She's. 
crush me. <laughs> oh my God. Harder. All right. Yeah, teach Wayne. Hammer. Uh, are we on or what? Like, what are we doing? Are we doing the shit? Just so far, I need you to say go. I can't stop doing this right now and tell me whether I need to go or not. I, I, I think it's going.